Some of you will use today this phrase, let's think outside the box. If I had my way, you'd never utter that phrase again the rest of your life. What do you mean, think outside the box? What do you have to do when you're finished thinking outside the box? In most organizations, you've got to get back inside the box. Well, who put that box there in the first place? And why do we need it at all? Why can't we think without a box and really open up ourselves? You can take a prisoner out of his cell and let him run around in the exercise yard and he's out of the box. But in about an hour, somebody's going to blow a whistle. He's going back in. What you and I got to learn how to do, folks, is break open those boxes and not have them anymore. And to begin to see the real and the full potential of our lives. I bet you a lot of us would consider ourselves to be business-to-business -business businesses, though, wouldn't we? Because our clients, we list our clients in their corporate entities or associations. Only 12% of those customers are fully engaged with you. In other words, folks, if we fit into this research, and let's not jump to the conclusion that we do, but if we did on average, most of our customers would drop us like a rock. How do you and I get engagement? How do we have presence that transcends all of this? You can see that I've chose as a topic the power of spirit. There is something within who you are that really holds the key to your competitiveness and to your profitability. I want to begin with a statement that I hope you'll almost write down because I think it's a very powerful one for our day. And that is this, that all that will ever be possible is already possible. Sometimes we think that our imagined future is out there somewhere and we have to work our way to it. The truth, folks, is that it's all there now. It's we who are separate from it. It's we who have to kind of realize that whether you want to be a miserable failure or whether you want to be an enormous success, it's all possible now. We have to wait for nothing. Our future is literally waiting for our instructions. And so the challenge for us as we leave this conference after this evening's banquet is what instructions will you give your future? It's all there for us. What we're hoping to do in this brief time with you is show you. There's a magnetic energy. There's a way of, of sending out an energy from your own personal being that attracts people to you like bees to honey. You know that when you meet people, you are either attracted or repelled. How does that happen? It's because something is happening energetically between people. We're going to demonstrate that to you right here on this stage. There's uncanny wisdom available to us if we learn how to access our intuition and begin to sense things in a different way instead of being so up into our heads trying to figure everything out. There's a wisdom available to you. And then finally, there are infinite possibilities here. One of the things that has been the thrill of my entire career is this last little while with Unify and the kind of goals that people are beginning to set. We're not satisfied any longer with little incremental steps. They're going for the whole thing. There's just such huge thinking going on that you can't even sit in the presence of these people and not get excited about this. Something is happening, ladies and gentlemen. There is a shift coming in the world. And our choice is we can be part of it or not. And we can hang on to our bureaucracies. We can cling to the old ways of doing things. But folks, there is something bigger than all of that going on right now. And we can decide to jump into that river or we can fight against that river. It is totally, totally up to you. What is this new world like? What are we headed for? What are we on the edge of? And what could that do for us? I'm going to show you something that will look like a Ferris wheel made out of an old Meccano set. I'm going to show you this to illustrate the power of your mind to change reality. When you see this Ferris wheel, would you initially make it go clockwise? You ready? Now make it, just with your thought, go counterclockwise. Half the room go clockwise, half the room go counterclockwise. Now, you may look at that and say, well, yeah, but it's, you know, it depends what side I look at. No, it doesn't. Look up in one of the corners and just think clockwise or counterclockwise. You'll get a glimpse of which way it's moving. Isn't that weird? How many want me to turn this off? Right? <laughs> it's an optical illusion, I understand, but it's a metaphor, folks, because what you are focusing on with your mind is what you're going to get. Furthermore, I want you to notice in this, in this illustration that you cannot stand still. You have to go one way or the other. That's just the way it is. I want you to think flow, not problem solving. 
Now, let me tell you a little bit about what I mean by that, because I'm not actually going to kind of hit each of these four points. I'm going to talk about things that will lead you to dealing with these four points. When I, when I talk about flow, here, here's what we're doing wrong generally in business. You have a problem somewhere in the, in the system, and what you do is you try to find somebody with a solution to that problem. What we don't tend to do is figure out what will that solution do to the rest of the system. And you have seen this. You got something wrong with your car, all right? You take it in and you think you fix that problem. What happens on the way home from the garage? You got another problem. Right? I thought you fixed it. Well, I didn't fix that problem. I fixed this problem. Well, maybe that solution created this problem. You hear what I'm saying to you? Flying in last night, Terminal 3. Right? You go through all the immigration stuff and everything. We walk down this lovely, wide corridor. We could put eight people across with luggage, no problem at all. But how do you get out? Little tiny gate. What kind of idiot designed that? Right? You see, there's no flow. And so when you try to fix something, don't fix it. Fix, look at the whole flow of the system from beginning to end. Because you may find that fixing that, that problem isn't the problem at all. It was caused upstream by something else. There are two things that happen in every industry and particularly in yours. We can describe one of them as the economy. In Greek, it's the oikos nomos, which literally means what are the rules? What are we measuring? What does the data say? The hardcore stuff, the numbers-driven things, if you will. And that's important. Measuring margins and profitability is absolutely essential. But there's another part as well. The other part is the ecology. The oikos logos in Greek, and a lot of you who know a bit of Greek will recognize the, the word for word in logos. And what it means is the deep structure of the house. This is the real stuff, the undercurrent. This is who you are really. One of the reasons I would come in and spend an entire day yesterday, even though I'm not working till today, is because I want to know who you are. I want to look in your eyes and sit with you at a meal and feel your spirit, feel your ecology. Nobody in this room would say, I'm resistant to change. I don't like new ideas. But what we really mean when we say that is, I like change within this parameter. So we are, quote unquote, flexible. We do different things, but it's still generally in the frame of reference here. We literally hardwire our brains. The fact is, folks, outside of that reference again are what we call the non-adjacent options. These are the options that you don't even know exist yet in your world. Now, this is going to be an important point. Let me make it now, and then I make it again. The very idea, solution, that you are looking for in your organization is right now outside of your frame of reference. Because if it was within your frame of reference, you'd actually be doing it, and you wouldn't be looking for the idea, would you? Every solution you need is by definition over here someplace, over there someplace. And the trick is we don't see it. So how can we learn how to expand our perspective on life and begin to see what would be really wise and suitable and profitable for the future?